welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today we are to finish the next opus of Nocturnos, opus 15. We have the last final third Nocturno in G minor. Probably, or I would say surely, the most enigmatic, the most strange and mysterious of all the Chopin Nocturnos, and the most unusual as well. So let's see what we have in this piece. First I will just play for you the first phrase and then we talk about this masterpiece. And then, then it's repeated. Is it Chopin? Is it romantic? Well, it is romantic music, but is it really a Chopin? Well, okay. What do you read? What do we read in the web on the website of uh, Polish Chopin Institute? Uh, the words written by uh, Professor Mieczysław Tomaszewski. Very interesting. What we hear. The Nocturno in G minor, composed in a gloomy, melancholy key, G minor, has become engulfed in extra musical descriptions and commentaries regarding the work's genesis. This is a very, very interesting. Schultz, Anthony Schultz, the monographer of Chopin, um, he wrote a very interesting thing that one day, on the day after attending the theater for a performance of Hamlet by Shakespeare, Chopin wrote the Nocturne, Opus 15, number 3, and gave it the inscription at the cemetery. But when it was to go to print, he expunged the, this inscription, declaring, let them guess. So it means Chopin wanted us to guess that this piece is about the cemetery Hamlet problems or his feeling after watching the Hamlet play. Uh, in Schultz's commentary we, we read, when improvising among a group of friends Chopin would often produce musical pictures of situations and episodes from domestic and public life. This is true. In many, many, many uh, documents and books we can uh, read that Chopin loved to play the music about something. This is true. But Chopin never, Chopin never wrote anything about that, I mean, in his music. Because he did not like to give his works, as others did, grandiloquent titles to clarify the content, preferring to let them speak for themselves. This is quite interesting. Let them speak for themselves. Yes, that's why Chopin would hate all the titles like Ranger of Prelude or Minute Wars or uh, the Winter Storm Etude or what do we else do we have? The, the, what else? I don't know. I'm, I don't even know. But uh, many, many. We have a lot of titles. As you know, none of this title comes from Chopin. But here we read also a very interesting thing. Jean-Jacques Eigerdinger has checked where and when Chopin attended Hamlet. This is so nice, so 
so fantastic. And he was certain that Chopin had seen it in Warsaw in the summer of 1830 and then in Paris in January 1833, the same year in which the G minor nocturne is believed to have been composed. Well, this is very special. It's almost sure that this is true. When listening to the Nocturne in G minor, we, we feel this peculiar atmosphere, this fantastic, mystical, surreal, surreal. So this is very similar to Hamlet or uh, by Shakespeare, if you know this play. But you know what? I don't want to in this video. I don't want to comment and make analysis of Hamlet connected with this music. I want to make analysis of the music itself. I hope you agree. And, but I want to, show, I want to give you this uh, explanation and these facts so that you can yourself think and discover this masterpiece. It's not often played, uh, but maybe you can. Uh, the, Arthur Rubinstein played it amazingly. You can find a great interpretation of his. I love it. He has a long sound because we need to have a very long sound. It sounds best on a very long grand piano. I opened my grand piano. If you know my other videos, you know that very often it's closed. Uh, that's because of the I, this room is rather small, so it's not very good, for, especially for bigger pieces, to have it open. But I want to have a very long sound on the piano. I want the strings to vibrate for a long time. Um, that's why I have it open. Hopefully it will help. Okay, but let's do this kind of analysis, even though it's, it's very difficult. Because this Nocturne, as I said, this music is very, very enigmatic and mysterious. Let's go. First of all, the first phrase is already very strange. We have the melody. And then we have a long note, which ends finally that's why I'm saying that this the piano must have a long sound, because this note we have to hear it all the time until the end. At the same time, we have the accompaniment, which is uh, unlike all the other nocturnos we had before, and unlike all the next nocturnos we are going to have. The nocturno is on three, so it's like a waltz or. Mazurka, maybe not mazurka, maybe mazurka. We can ha we can tell that this is a kind of Kuyaviak melody. La -ta -tam -tam, la -ta -tam. It is a little Kuyaviaks like the, so the slow Polish dance. But this the the left hand has the accompaniment which is we doesn't have three. We only have one and two. Listen, one, two, one, two, silence. One, two, silence, one. Silence, 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 all the time, all the time. So, if we consider number three as a perfect number, let's say in the symbol of here, uh, once I've read that the, what is on three is like a perfect number in the nature, because three is like our heart is beating on three, like we have, we have beat and stop and beat, you know? So three. This is very, very interesting. Well, maybe. But if we consider it like that, then if we don't have one of this, one, two, or three, then we have imperfection. Then we have something, something is missing here. The symbol of something missing, definitely Chopin wanted to put here in this accompaniment because he could write a very different accompaniment. <laughs> For 
example, or so now you can see what the difference is when we have only this. first phrase and what is characteristic here is this motif remember that too short too long short short long long short short long long this is very important because this will change I mean this will change its character and this will bring the huge drama later throughout the piece now very interesting another thing which I found out this long note is waiting in exactly as long as before this phrase was lasting so this is as if in our subconscious we hear this melody again the second time what i mean is when we have this and now as if well i could i could probably compose a better melody than this one let's me do it again understand my point this is fascinating isn't it fascinating for me it is as if we want to sing this melody again and then what we have next we have some kind of moanings ta ta Ah, takie, ah, takie. This is something like very. Chopin is writing here accent every time on the first note. That's why I'm saying that's the symbol of this. And then the melody is repeated. phrases one phrase with this long note when we have time to think maybe this is like a question to be or not to be and after this question we need a lot of time to really think about the sense of it the sense of life of being alive because that's what the Hamlet is asking and then later he says that if the life is full of sorrow, what's the sense of living? And this sorrow we have here, right? Okay, but anyway, 
as I said before, I don't want to go very deeply into this, this topic. Now let's see what we have next. Part B uh, of this first big part of the nocturnal. Part B we have a very sad melody going down and still we have this motif pam pa pa pam pam short short long long listen to this melody and again long note so some question and we wait for the answer and then again it is built. Left hand is obsessively only playing one and two, never three. One, two, one, two, listen, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. drama and just like drama in the Hamlet <laughs> this and the drama will be built uh, by obsessively repeating this short short long long short short long long and the harmony will br make us feel more and more uh, anxious more and more dramatic and we feel more and more fear listen this drama is very interesting. We have two persons. One person is having this moaning, ah, ah, this ah, this is a, excuse me, this and another person is answering short, short, long, long. And again the moaning, and again the answer. Again, two. and again the answer so the answer is the same the moaning is also there so this is definitely what Chopin wanted to achieve we know it from other nocturnos as well it seems like there is somebody asking for uh, <clears throat> for some kind of forgiveness mercy and there is uh, some kind of will or uh, fate that says no or well, it must be it must be like this so let's listen again to this big trauma <laughs> consider it as a Hamlet then this part is Ophelia with more and more frust well how to say mm. just just before she ends her life by jumping into this, the, the water so she feels 
uh, very dramatic, right? And she screams. <laughs> maybe at the cemetery the choir of people praying this is a typical uh, example it's a very literal prayer taken from the catholic church which chopin attended a lot when he was young and he even played organs and he was listening um, the prayers uh, the songs and chorals and he was playing himself um, and here, why it's so literal? Because Chopin writes here in Italian, religioso, which means religious. So now it's a prayer for mercy for the person who committed suicide, if we consider it as a Hamlet. Typical choral, four voices choral, very beautiful sotto voce, so very silently. Let's now just pray. The final part of the nocturnal. It's not a prime, my friends. Surprised? Because I am. Very strange, very strange. The A part will never appear again. This is the another reason to say that it's probably Hamlet. It's probably Ophelia. Because she's dead. How can she be back? Only as a ghost. Only as a ghost. Very interesting. Because here we hear the long notes. Which I always consider as a bell. You know, the bell of the cemetery church. In the church. We have bells here. typical bells and in the in the middle we have three notes pam 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 listen
hands in G major. So there is a hope. After the death, the death, there is a hope. That's it. I think it is strange, but if we really go deeper, if we think about all what I've said, this Nocturno starts to make sense. It's better understood and it's, it reveals its beauty. So I hope you agree with me and maybe now you will like it even more. Thank you for watching and see you again soon in the next videos about Opus 27, the probably most beautiful opus of all. Bye-bye.